Hey guys, before we get into this interview, if you want to go down and support Tiago Caterino, who is the former Lego designer turned YouTuber, definitely go subscribe to his channel. It's the first link in the description and in the pinned comment and on the little icon at the top of the screen throughout the video. He makes incredible little Lego builds every single day, building tips, large scale builds, some live streams here and there. It's a lot of fun and I highly recommend checking him out. His channel has blown up recently and he is He's excelling in the Lego YouTube space. But without any further ado, let's get on with the interview. Yeah, so I've got I've got a list of questions here um, from from the video that uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I did the other day. Um, I guess we could just like, we could just start start it now. Um, yeah, for sure. Go ahead and uh, tell us tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, your career at Lego and then, you know, leaving Lego and now your very successful YouTube channel that you've started. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's a lot, but I guess let's go from the start. So yeah, as a kid, I, I've always enjoyed uh, Lego a lot and it was my favorite time, uh, my favorite toy of all time. So uh, it made sense that as a kid, uh, I dreamed of being an astronaut, but also working for Lego. So only years later that I realized that you could actually work for Lego because uh, that idea in my mind uh, didn't click that there would be people behind the products, you know. And yeah, I joined this LUG, uh, the Lego users group here in Portugal. And then they were talking about their, there were these uh, positions open uh, for, uh, yeah, uh, Lego designers, uh, Lego model designers uh, uh, in Billund. So yeah, there was a couple of guys that got in uh, uh, before, like uh, Marcus Bessa was the first one from our from our lug, uh, and I think everybody knows about uh, Marcus Bessa by now. Yep. There's also Ricardo, uh, also Portuguese designer, also from our lug that uh, has worked from friends for friends ever since he got in there and then yeah then at some point it felt like the a good timing and then yeah i saw this job opening and then i yeah i tried i tried my luck and i guess uh, i got lucky yeah i guess i could kind of talk about the way uh, it usually works because yeah I, I feel that there's a lot of people asking about it so yeah I'll, i think um I think but, you, we yeah, could actually probably, we could talk about that the later. There's, there's yeah, actually yeah. a couple questions that, that that could apply to. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so so now so you've since left Lego. How long were you were you with the Lego group? Uh, I was there for three and a half years. Always okay. in Creator Three in One. That was the team I was working on. But I also managed to do like some side gigs uh, with a ship in a bottle for Lego Ideas and a Gingerbread House for Creator Expert. And you also did some stuff with the classic theme as well. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That uh, by the end of it, it uh, classic and creator were kind of uh, same team or working together. Okay. So yeah, but okay. yeah, you're, you're right. It. My my last set, my biggest set of all, was a classic one actually, which is yeah. kind of funny. And now now you make uh, YouTube videos, and and you've kind yes. of skyrocketed in popularity uh yeah it seems like it's going that way and, and i'm very very happy about it while when i left lego i you know going back to my old job when you've had your dream job uh, it's it would be kind of hard so i was trying to think of ways of how could i turn this lego thing that i love into something that could support me and my family so yeah the logical thing to do would be like youtube you know or not very logical but i don't know at the time that felt like a, a good idea and yes yeah, so i i decided to run with it i had the financial capabilities to to try this out for at least a year and yeah i haven't gotten down to the one year mark but things are going uh, really really well doing daily building tips mostly on my youtube channel and yeah another random lego videos but yeah things things are going really really well 
Couldn't yeah. be happier. That's awesome. And I'm, and I'm super happy for you to kind of go in from one Lego job to dream jobs to now many people want to be a YouTuber, a YouTube star, and now you're doing Lego and YouTube. It's kind of, kind of like the best yeah. of both worlds there. So yes, for sure. So we've got, I've got a list of questions we can choose from. Um, I think a lot of the questions I did get, and even from, you know, uh, DMs on Instagram and stuff, everyone okay. wants to know, you, you know, favorites. What's your favorite set? What's the favorite set you've designed? Uh, you know, like, did you prefer yeah. designing for creator or ideas? You know, uh, yeah. let's just start. What's your, what's your favorite Lego set of all time? I've got two when people ask me this question is uh, Ninjago City and uh, the Saturn V rocket. Awesome. Uh, for the builders, for the people who enjoy building stuff and the cool techniques, the Saturn V is like a masterpiece. I was completely blown away having built that recently and it's, it's just crazy. Carl and Mike are, are geniuses. Yeah. when designing their set. So that's uh, from a building perspective, technique perspective is amazing. Uh, the Ninjago City, uh, it's, it's, yeah, my favorite set because it's like a modular building, but not as boring as a modular building because in a <laughs> modular building, uh, there's an awesome ground floor and then usually the top two floors are basically the same or very close and you ju just change the, the interiors but they're full of r really nice details and the wall detail is always cool but then ninjago city has all of that like in a mini scale so you you get in my mind you get like mini modular buildings you know stacked yeah. on top of each other and is and it has awesome techniques awesome awesome functionalities and all that so and it's an awesome part spec as well. So from all points of view, until now, Ninjago City has to be my favorite set. Awesome. Um, so I guess what sets have you, did you design um, at your time at Lego? I'll, I'll put up pictures of them on the, in the video, but yeah. um, just kind of go through a list of which ones you worked on. Yes, for sure. Uh, most of the sets that I worked on were creator thin one sets that probably nobody ever heard about. Uh, and there's and there's and there's a bunch of them. So I don't know. There's like the modular skate house, a modular type uh, houses. Uh, so I did the skate house, uh, poolside holiday. I've also done uh, like uh, a stunt truck, which is really cool. One of the coolest that I've done for Creator Three in One. There's also a really nice one that I like, which is this uh, truck and shuttle transporter. It has like two very known icons, but even though they don't fit in the real world uh, within the same scale, because it's like a better built truck and it carries like uh, the shuttle, the space shuttle in the back, makes complete, makes no sense at all, but there are two known icons mashed together. And I think the kids uh, like those a lot. And I had a lot of fun designing that one, for instance. Also the pug, the poly bag. The mm -hmm. Pug Polybike has to be one of my favorites. Um, yeah, but there's a lot more uh, Creator 3 in 1 sets that I designed. And yeah, outside of that, I did the, the Ship in a Bottle. Uh, I loved working on that one. It was like a, a crazy challenge, you know, like making an actual Lego bottle was, was kind of crazy. And also the Ginger Bath House was like, uh, I always felt like a fan, even though I was working for Lego. So for me, the, the height, the high moment was like a, a, a managing to do like a creator expert model. So yeah, yeah that, was, that was kind of fun. Yeah, and, and you said that, so you worked on the creator three-in-one line, but you did ship in a bottle. I've heard the story, but a lot of people haven't kind of, how did you, how did you get assigned the ship <laughs> in the bottle set? Because that's an idea set and not a creator. Yeah, so the, the Lego Ideas team doesn't have a fixed team of designers like Creator 3-in-1 does or Star Wars does. So they usually, I don't know if things have changed now, but they usually get people from other teams to work on specific sets. So for the ship in a bottle, I've overheard a conversation between uh, some colleagues of mine that they were looking for a designer for the ship in a bottle set and 
it seemed like a, a cool challenge. So in an afternoon, I sketched a, a ship in a bottle, a, a small one, but just like as a as my cover letter, you know, to the to the manager of the ideas team at the time. And yeah, I left it. I left that build that I did uh, on her desk and sent her an email. Look, I would be interested in working on the ship in a bottle set. Sounds like fun. And here's my cover letter uh, in a way. And yeah, the next day we were talking about it. And then yeah, I got permission from my manager uh, for, for, from my team to, to do it. And yeah, and then in the end, I got to do it, which was, yeah, kind of funny. So cool. That's so cool. It kind of, kind of like with the you building, you building a, a cover letter and kind of putting it on the desk and yeah. being like, "Hey, I want to do this one." I think that that always intrigued me with the fun that uh, you product designers would have, kind of as a whole group. That you know, you're all working together. You get to talk to other departments and all that sort of thing. It's kind of it all seems like one big, uh, like great family. Yeah, it is, and. All things are working in the same building, like Innovation House. So it's like a few steps and you're in city, a few more steps and you're seeing the Star Wars guy. So yeah, it is like that. Yeah, it was, it was great for me. Um, when I was on the inside tour, we, we got to go in the Innovation House. Um, really? Uh, obviously, yeah, we, we had to put our phones away. We couldn't do all that. All oh, wow. Things, everything was shut. Uh, they kind of escorted us up into the, like one of the big meeting rooms that you have on, okay. on the side. So we were in the meeting room when we got to, um, there was a few presentations everywhere, but it was, it was really cool just, you know, thinking what's, what's right around the corner. You know, I probably yeah. could have seen some of the new monkey kids sets if I had just like peek the peak, you know? So it's, yeah. it, it was kind of, it was thrilling to be there being like, this is where the magic happened. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I definitely it's literally that. like just around the corner. Yeah. It's, it's great. Um, so I guess um, the, the title of this video is How to Become a Lego Designer. Yeah. So you, you mentioned that uh, you kind of got the luck of the draw. You heard, you heard that they were looking for a designer yeah. and you kind of just threw your name in there. But how would, how would I, how would anyone else watching um, do that? If they're not a part of a user group or if they don't have a connection to it, um, like through, through your lug, you know, you said that Marcus had already, you know, gone through so that yeah. Lego was kind of familiar with it. How would a, a regular Joe like me apply? Yeah. Like, is there an application process or do you meet someone at the Lego store? You know, um, kind of go in yeah. quickly into that. Yeah. So, yeah, the fact that Marcus and Ricardo had, had already gotten in before had nothing to do with the fact of me getting in because I got in the way that everyone uh, should uh, get a job at Lego, which is you go to lego.com and then scroll all the way down and there's a place in there that says jobs. So you go in there and then you can see all of the positions to all, to all of the company. And it's not only, only Billund, it's like London, China, everywhere. So in there you can just look for the position you're looking for. Uh, if, you're, if you want to be a model designer, you have to be, yeah, look for a model design or a design in Billund. There's a couple of fields that you can check uh, to narrow down your, your research. Uh, but then it, it's it's that uh, simple in a way you get like a, a job posting so you go in there and there is a link where you can put your uh, information and you can submit uh, your portfolio and yeah and then you have to do that and just uh, wait uh, until the the guys get back to you uh, what I did was um, so usually the way to get in as a model designer is to have a background on design of some sort. Usually the most preferred way is to have a, a, a degree on um, product design or toy, or toy design. Every design degree will work or will help you, but uh, the most common thing that uh, Lego is looking for is like product designers or toy designers. And there's also the other way, it's the AFOL way, which was the way that I got in, that I got in because I've also submitted my portfolio as any other uh, product designer would do. But in that portfolio, I put all of my fan builds. So all of the custom builds that I was, or at least I chose the best ones that I thought that would uh, highlight my, my capabilities more. So I just put together a portfolio of that. I, I also put a page of my real life work 
some images of and video stills of because I was doing like video editing before and so I put some images of that but it was like one page like 95% of my portfolio were my creations and yeah I sent that in and then yeah I have to wait a few months and then I got uh, uh, I got contacted to to have a Skype interview uh, okay. with a few people that's like the the first step after you submit your portfolio and yeah and then if the Skype interview goes well and they ask you like the usual stuff you know why Lego what where would you like to work and what drives you you know uh, typical uh, job interview and if that goes well then they call you or yeah they fly you to Billund for a two-day workshop where they also do a couple more interviews and then the building tests and drawing tests for two days straight and yeah more than building because most of the people there don't even touch on Lego bricks for years right. because they come from their design backgrounds and not from AFOL backgrounds. Um, so yeah, they focus more on seeing how you deal with other people. If you're cool around other people, you know, if you can possibly work as a team because there's also some team assignments on the recruitment workshop. So more than your skills with building with Lego bricks, they will be looking at these points, uh, the type of person that you are and if you can work well together with other people. Because once you're in there, then Lego can teach you the Lego way right. uh, of building things. Uh, but yeah, the workshop went really, really well for me. And a couple of days later, they called me, offering me uh, a job. That's so cool. That's awesome. Because yeah. I, know, I know for me personally, I mean, I think when I was when I was really young, um, we have a we have a thing in the U.S. I don't know if you have it anywhere else. Like Kids Fest, um, this was in the state of Virginia. It's like a Lego convention meant for younger kids, where they do different okay. workshops and they've got you know displays and stuff. So Kids Fest was like kind of the first thing to me where I actually got to meet um, a master model builder. I I can't remember his name. I'll put up a picture because I know what he looks like. Um, okay. But I got to meet I got to meet him, and you know from there it was kind of like wow, I really want to be a Lego designer, but mm -hmm. I always had it in my head that, you know, there's probably only 10 designers and because it's the best job ever, they're never going to quit. <laughs> so there's no point in me even trying to get a job. But then, you know, being on the inside tour, being able to talk with, I talked with Justin Ramsden and then uh, one of the, uh, Neek, I talked with Neek uh, yeah. from Hidden Side and yeah. for like during the dinners and I kind of got a real sense of, oh, wow, this is something I could actually do. You know, yeah. if, if I get, if I can get my head in, like, you know, get my foot in the door, it's something that, that could actually happen. So it's really neat hearing your success story from, from that. And, uh, yeah. and yeah, that's just, that's awesome um, that it worked out for you that way. Um, let's see, I've got another question. Um, what's the best part? What was the best part about working for Lego? Uh, for me personally was the free Lego. <laughs> <laughs> and you would get yeah. like free Lego sets for for different reasons. You would always get a copy of the sets that you have worked on. So that's one. And then, yeah, sometimes uh, they would be giving out some copies of uh, products from other teams so that you can, so that you could test those out and build those out and give the teams, the other teams some cool. feedback and all that. So yeah, and, and jokes aside, it, it, it really was like the best, the best job in the world, you know, you getting paid to to play all day you know that's that's yeah. that's just gold you know it doesn't feel like like a job i was never tired or sad or oh man another day at work it never right. felt like that you know i was always happy to go to 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 work so yeah um here's one can you ever return to Lego or was, was the gravestone in the new haunted house kind of the nail in the coffin for you? Are, are you going to resurrect it all? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess if things in my life changed and it made sense for me to, to go back, I guess I, I would try again to reapply, you know, uh, it was great. 
the the times I was there was was really awesome, uh, and I really really miss it, and I miss a lot of the people as well because yeah, even though the the job was great, what made the job great was also the amazing and talented people that you had around you. So, uh, but for sure, if if I had the chance to go back, uh, I would go back. Although I'm also having a lot of and now with this YouTube thing and it's kind of working out. So at this point, I'm like, hmm, yeah, Portugal is sunny, you know, and <laughs> you don't get a lot of sun in Denmark. And yeah, yeah. I'm here close to my family and whatnot. So there's pros and cons, but you never know. Yeah, of course. I guess they're trying to kill me, but <laughs> still alive and well. Yeah, I mean, and even... Funny. Even that sort of thing, like the fact that you didn't know that they were going to do that, and, no. and they they made it they made it you because they used the same font from the ship in the bottle seal, like they yeah. did that after you left, kind of behind your back. But that that just shows, I guess, how the the, the family aspect of, of how how enjoyable it is for everyone else to work there. They're like, you know, what can we put here? Oh, you know, let's do an homage to uh, Tiago. Like it's, that's just. That's probably one of the coolest things that I think of when I think of, you know, product design. Seeing them dressed up for the designer videos and just all the fun that they have. I, I think that's, that's really, really cool. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the nicest people, for sure. Yeah. And that caught me completely off guard. So I was like, wow. When I saw yeah. the designer video and saw the TC on the tombstone, I was like, what? Yeah. It was kind of that's unbelievable. Awesome. Yeah. Um, how long does it typically take to design a Lego set. They, they come to you and say, hey, we need a $30 creator set. You know, um, it's gonna release uh, like, you know, here or whatever. From, from you sitting down and saying, okay, I'm gonna start building to it being on shelf. How long does that process take? And does it vary based off of like how large the set is? Like a UCS Star Wars set versus a mm -hmm. poly bag. Do you, do you get the poly bag done quick, you know, and then work on the bigger set? Um, you know, how, how does that work? How long does it typically take? I think it's okay for me to talk about this, but usually a set, it's like a year almost, but it doesn't okay. start when you start building it. It starts earlier when you start making concepts, concept work and deciding what will be the, the next sets for any given line. And usually, yeah, from the time we start building as designers it, it takes like two or three months of designing the actual set but then a lot of steps come in before and also after we're done with the with the brick design you know the the building instructions people come in the the packaging people come in so yeah okay from start to finish usually it's around a year uh, for UCS sets, they might be thinking of the idea for, for years until they decide to, to do it. But I'm, I'm not exactly sure uh, how long right. does it take them, but it's usually a year or, or more. And I think with yeah. bigger sets, I think the time frame is pretty much the same. When I was doing the gingerbread house, with, which was kind of a somewhat bigger set than, than what I was usually doing, the time frame was was more or less the same, but I just had like a few more weeks to to design the thing. Okay, but it's usually yeah. around uh, one year. Yeah, because I remember um, I think uh, Justin uh, Ramsden tweeted um, when when they revealed the Monkey Kid set that he had been working on it for a couple of years. So I guess that's kind of that that you know pre-design phase, just like the idea yeah. stage where they get all that together and then they can start designing the set and yeah. then they can release it after they get the box art and all the instructions done. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's pretty cool that you have that there's, I mean, I, I say there's so much time, but then again, you're designing, you know, official products that mm -hmm. I feel like the, the time would run out pretty quickly. Yeah. 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 And for um, me, and it was kind of great that it worked like that, that you wouldn't be stuck with the project for, for too long. Because for me, at least, I get bored easily if I'm working on the same thing for, for a few months. Um, I don't have the drive anymore. I, I always like to be moving on to the next project. So these daily tip things uh, that I'm doing on my YouTube channel is, is actually great because it's a new build every day. So yeah. I will never get bored. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And um, 
do you do you work as a designer so you did the gingerbread house do you work alongside the uh like the box artists and the instructors like do you work alongside of them to kind of tell them your vision for what you want the box to look like or if you can talk about this um or is it just solely them you give them the product they yeah. take the pictures those those things are, are done by 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 other teams you're okay. always welcome to to give your feedback and you you usually always get to see the things before they're like approved so that you can okay. see if there are any mistakes on the on the photos that they took for the box you know and give some input but yeah stuff that's not design related it's usually driven by 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 other teams of course of course. Um, what's I got a question from a from a user. Um, what's the best way to practice building? So if you're if you're younger and you want to become a designer, should you work with physical bricks? Should you use um, like online softwares like Lego Digital Designer or Studio? Because mm. um, I know different designers, you know, they prefer different methods. Is there a yeah. better method or? I think for you to get a sense of the way the bricks work you know uh, you should always build with the physical bricks and because and because if you're purely building on digital sometimes uh, not sometimes it, gravity doesn't exist on digital so right things that you think that work actually don't uh, so i would say that if you want to practice and if you want to be better at building with lego bricks you should for sure start with the uh, physical bricks. Although now, for me, when designing for Lego, I was always like, I always prefer to, to get on, yeah, go straight to the bricks and start there. Uh, but now I don't have as much time. So now I tend to start digitally my builds because that way I can know how things will look in the end that will allow me also to be more effective. I don't make such a, a big mess to, to find or to try different solutions, you know? Yeah. And my desk will not be super messy at, at the end of one build. So right now I'm kind of enjoying uh, the way of doing this, starting digitally and then building uh, physically. Uh, but yeah, it depends. And there were uh, some designers at Lego for instance, that actually prefer to start digitally. So it can go either way. But if you want to learn how to build and to be better with the bricks, I would say like build with the actual uh, bricks. Yeah, because I think with, with starting physical, um, you can you learn about you know the different the different ways that the system lines up with brackets and different, you know, it's not elements and that because yeah. with digital, you might miss it and then you never kind of learn that. So yeah, that's very helpful. And if you have like a pile of bricks in front of you, you might be looking at two different bricks and then try to put them on together. And that doesn't happen with, uh, with digital, you know, you just have a pallet, you have to think of a brick and go pick it up. But then when you have a pile of bricks in front of you, like sometimes you'll find this cool connection that yeah, you couldn't actually, otherwise. I think I think this dinosaur here. I built this a couple of years ago, but I used a a wheel hub yeah. for like the the eyebrow and like I, you know if I was building digital, I never would have done that. Yeah, for a sure. A wheel hub goes so, on a, a car, not a dinosaur. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's, that's a, a very good example. So yeah. very good point. Yeah. Um, I think I mean I think that was all the questions that I got asked. Um, okay. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else that that I need to know, but I'm not coming up with anything. So I guess, thank you so much for uh, tuning in and uh, will it, being willing to, to join me on this video. So uh, thank you so much for, for joining You're me. You're very welcome. My pleasure. Yeah. yeah, if you guys want to check out his daily building tips, again, link in the description below. It's the first one everywhere, the pinned comment and all that. Um, all yeah. the little icons at the top of the, <laughs> of yes. the video. Definitely check them out. Great channel. I love uh, watching his videos every single day so thank yeah. you so thank much, you so much. yep yep all right and build something fun today <laughs> build something fun today there we go yeah